Michelle Murray uh, asked a really good question in the Facebook group about transformations and kind of how to understand them. And while I answered this question there, I thought I'd go ahead and make, <coughs> excuse me, a video uh, with a longer explanation and talk about transformations and their use in learning mathematics, particularly teaching using Gitanio's method. Gitanio's focus on transformations is apparent in all of his written work. He'd say it is the key to learning any subject quickly and well, and he called it the algebra of things. And it doesn't matter if it's bread baking, language, or writing, or math, there are these underlying truths that must be learned and there are rules for manipulating those truths. And once you understand how they work, you can manipulate them to serve whatever purposes you have. For instance, you don't need 50 muffin recipes if you know the science behind quick breads and how they work. And once you get that part down, your imagination is the only limiting factor in your muffin making and quick bread making career of course, as long as you follow the basic rules. One of Gitanio's most famous quotes is that memory is weak in all of us. And memory is a cognitive skill that we should, that should be developed. I'm not saying it isn't, but because it is the weakest and often not reliable, especially under pressure, he said we shouldn't use it as the primary mode of education. The first reason, or at least one reason, is that memorizing doesn't ensure that you can use the information that you know. And the second one, or a second reason, is that the focus on memorizing leaves students who have particularly poor memories with the mistaken belief that they just aren't good at something. So kids by third grade often decide that they're not good at math when in fact it has nothing to do with math it just has something to do with their memories which are completely different they're not the same so learning math the way that Gitanio does dispenses with the need to memorize lots of facts there's enough language that must be memorized that there's no need to add a bunch of isolated facts on top though I highly suggest that after we do after learning the way Gitanio has you learn, that you that you that your students memorize as much as they can because it'll make life easier. But that's not the focus. You th they only need one fact. That's all they need. So it's interesting, also that when I meet students, that they rarely actually have a math problem. Um, what they usually suffer from for the most part, it's language problems, though they often have curriculum and teacher problems too, but it's usually both parents and adults, or parents and students, suffer from uh, not understanding the language of math. And that's a language problem, not a math problem. So this video isn't going to cover all possible transformations, I wouldn't have time, but just a couple of types of transformations with the rods so that you can kind of see where Gitanio is headed. The reason that we use rods is because they behave like numbers and you can use and manipulate the rods um, and learn a lot about the symbols and the rules for manipulating the symbols if you ask yourself the right kinds of questions. So let's take a black rod and make a train of all white. So go ahead and do this. All right, now I'm going to make a bunch of two car trains that are equivalent to the black. Now, when I first start, uh, when our kids first start, they're lo likely just going to be randomly picking rods and putting them down and then finding the missing rod. But eventually we want our students to find all possible rods in an organized way. And the reason we want them to do that is because they can visually see it's visually obvious whether they have all possible trains and then also they become aware of the patterns that develop so let's do a bit of noticing on this mat I'm going to use numbers to talk about the structure because that's what most of us are familiar with and it will make more sense and I'm going to write out each row 
So we have 1 plus 6, 2 plus 5, 3 plus 4, 4 plus 3, 5 plus 2, and 6 plus 1. We can do a little bit of noticing wonder. So on the left side, it goes smallest to largest. This side uh, moves largest to smallest. And the left side starts with 1, and it ends with 6. And the right side starts with 6, and it ends with 1. And these rods over here are mirrors of each other. Now I noticed that if we were using whites, I could start on the left hand side and make an imaginary line or a real line in our case and get two groups of whites that are the same length as the top train. And I can move and I can move the line to the right one space and I can get the next train, which is two plus five. So the first time I got one plus six, this time I will get two plus five. And if I move it one more to the right, I get the train three plus four, and then I get four plus three, and then I get five plus two, and then I get six plus one. Now this gives me a clue about how addition works. I can regroup however I want and it doesn't change the total. Now with this knowledge, I can get any pair of add-ins for seven from any other pair of add-ins for seven by moving the whites from one set to the other set. I can do this by ones if I need to, or I can do it by more than one white if I have the ability. Now what else could I do with this knowledge? Well, I can transform any complement pair for any single number to any other complement pair for any other number by adding and subtracting whites. And if I need to, I can do it one white at a time. So how do I get from one plus two equals three to four plus three equals seven? So let's just go ahead and start and do one plus two equals three. I'll write that down. And if we add one white to the left side, we get two plus two equals four. Adding another white, we get three plus two equals five. One more white gives me four plus two equals six. And one more white, but this time we're going to add it to the left side of the plus sign. And I'm going to get four plus three equals seven. So we have one plus two equals three to four plus three equals seven, moving one white at a time. So I made this add ends chart and it's linked below this video or it should be linked below this video. Uh, putting information in charts helps us to notice patterns. And what I notice is that adding a unit on the right hand side of the plus sign moves me in a diagonal down the rows. Adding a unit to the left side moves you across the rows. Now this helps me see that there's a system to this whole addition thing. And we could pick any random addition fact and then get to any other addition fact by adding one to either the left side of the plus sign or to the right side of the plus sign. And if you take this chart, it would be good for you to play games with your kids and figure out how you're going to get from one fact to the next. And write those facts down in order and see how many ways you can find to get from one to another. What is the fewest number of steps from one fact to the next? And what do you notice about the number of steps and the difference between the sums of your original fact and then the fact that you ended up at? Now, of course, this is absolutely true that students could just use counting on or counting on their fingers to get uh, to any other fact, but that doesn't make them aware of the structure that underlies addition. In other words, how all of these facts are related to one another. 
we want to create systematic transformers of the symbols, or as Gatenya put it, mathematicians. And this is why Gatenya said over and over, if the teacher minds the symbols, the understanding will take care of itself. So as we add more language and then thus more symbols, we want to come back to compositions and transformations. What can our student do with the knowledge that they have about how the symbols work? We're not asking how many isolated facts they know, but how many ways can, can they combine their knowledge about the symbols to talk about the structures that they see. We aren't spoon feeding them math symbols and simply asking them to fill in the blanks with correct answers. This is going to lead them to believe that math is all about correct answers, which it's not. Gutenio's expectation is that students that the student can take whatever knowledge that they have about the symbols and any facts that they might have memorized and use those to create whatever math that they can. So let's take a look at this structure. What can we say about it? And how many ways can we talk about it? Well, the most obvious thing that we can say is that uh, red plus red plus red plus red plus purple, this is where we're going to start, is the same as orange. And orange is the orange-red combination. And it is a legitimate name for uh, 12. It's the same as it's a 10. This is a 10 rod and this is 2. And I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, hold on just a sec. I'm going to put the values in so that you can see. All right. All right, so there we are. So um, here we have this. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and do not the values. I'm going to go ahead and do letters. Just a second. There we go. All right, so we have uh, red plus red plus red plus red plus purple equals orange. And the first thing that we're going to do is transform these four reds, because they're really hard to say, uh, red plus red plus red plus red into four red plus purple equals orange. Now we can make another transformation. If four red plus purple equals orange, then a red plus three red plus purple would also equal orange. And we would know that two red plus two red, right, because we know that we can divide these up however we want. Two red plus two red plus purple equals orange. And we would also know that three red plus red plus purple equals orange, and we would know that 3 red plus purple plus red equals orange, and we could transform those however we would like. We could put the, we could do 2 red plus purple plus 2 red, that's also the same as orange. All right, what else can we say? Well, we know that uh, we could say that orange, the difference between orange and two red, is the same as purple plus two red. And the difference between orange and purple is the same as four red. And the difference between orange and for red is the same as purple. And we could say that, uh, let's see, half of four red is the same as orange, the difference between orange and purple plus two red. Now this, if your child K 
can fill up an entire page of these kinds of transformations, you know that they understand whatever symbols that they're using, and if they're accurately making these transformations, you know that they understand the connections between the different symbols, and you know that they can they make the connections between, they understand how to use them and manipulate them. Why would we do this? Why in the world would we do something like this? Like, why spend this much time on transformations? So, uh, particularly we had somebody in the Facebook group several years ago, and a mom posted the transformations that her child was working on, on a whiteboard, and he said that it was, this was a tutor who said that was dumb, why are we doing this? And then I was in a face, a different Facebook group, and one of the moms asked the question, um, and it was something like this, I, this may not be it, but it was like, something like 3x plus 4 equals uh, y. Something like this. And this is uh, something that's going to show up on the SAT test, right? So they're planning for the SAT test. She says, so the question was, write, rewrite this with x. So here we have this where it equals y. We want to rewrite this so that it equals x. How in the world would we do that? Well, we do that and it becomes easy because we start playing with these early on. And this is really just training and logic. If this is true, if this over here is true, then this thing over here must also be true. And if this is true here, right, we have this in terms of purple, but uh, we, the purple here would be four, right? That would be our four. Um, if this is true, then all of this must also be true. All right, so let's rewrite this, right? We can just change this. Uh, let's change this one to four because it's basically the same thing. So we have four X, we here are R's. We can just change that name to X. And then over here we have Y, this entire length here is our Y. And what is, so what would one X be? So there's lots of ways we could write this. We could write, what would it be? So the difference between y and y minus 4 plus 3x is the same as x. There we have it. Or we could write it as x. How other many ways could we write it? y equals y minus uh, 4 minus 3x. We could write it that way. Uh, we could write it, uh, let's see, x equals y minus 4, uh, 4 plus, let's see, uh, x plus x plus x. What else could we say? We could, uh, we could also say something like uh, x equals the difference between y minus 4 divided by 4. And that's going to give us x. If we take out uh, y minus 4 and we divide this by 4, we're going to have x is going to be left, or r is going to be left. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom, but this is 4 down here. All right, that's why we do this. So these are also, each one of these equations is a transformation uh, each of these equations expresses the relationship between the rods in a different way. And at some point, your student should be able to do these transformations without looking at the rods. And so it's not just about the ACT test and the SAT test. Uh, that's not why we do it. Catania wanted to develop students who were master manipulators of the symbols. Uh, but I don't even think that's really the objective. Uh, 
for me, when I go to teach math now as a homeschool parent, um, and actually having tutored a lot of kids, my objective, the whole purpose for teaching math for me is to develop the skills necessary to become self-educators and, prop and confident problem solvers. And doing, these, doing exercises like this is training in logic. And that's why we do it. Or at least, that's why I do it. If your goal is to have them get particular grades on their SAT or ACT, then you may have a different reason for doing it. But my goal is that my students uh, can, my kids can be lifelong learners and confident problem solvers.